joining our broadcast at City Life Church. We would love to hear how God is using this ministry in your life. Please take a minute to send us your story at info at citylifechurch.cc. And if God has used this ministry to touch you in any way, we want to encourage you to partner with us financially to help us bring God's word to other people. You can go to citylifechurch.cc to find the giving option that works best for you. Thank you again for joining us and enjoy today's message. Luke chapter 19, verse 1. This is what God's word says. It says, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was very wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. Anybody, you, you, you bear witness with that? You know what I'm saying? I hate going to parades because I always get stuck in the back. And I'm always like, Beth, just lift me up a little bit so I can see. <laughs> Verse 4 says, so he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see Jesus. Since Jesus was coming that way, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to be with the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. Today I want to speak to you for just a few minutes on this subject. Just a moment. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we thank you, God, so much for your word. God, how it is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our past. Father, we pray, God, that as we hear your word, God, that it would change our lives, change our hearts, and change our destinies. Father, we love you and we thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. Moments are a powerful thing. Moments can either make you or moments can break you. And moments in our lives, they mark specific timelines in our lives. I can look back on my life and because of moments that happened in my life, I can tell you where I was, what year it was, most of the time what I was wearing and what the conversation was about. Like for example, I remember the very first time I ever set eyes on my wife. I remember what I was doing. I remember where I was at. I remember what I was wearing, all right? I was a stud back in the day, okay? <laughs> I remember I had some baggy blue jeans on. I had an Ed Hardy t-shirt with a red Ed Hardy hat with black and white Ed Hardy shoes. Anybody, you know where I'm coming from? I was a stud. I remember I was at someone's house in Orlando, Florida, because I was at the time working at my very first ever ministry position job where I was getting paid full time to do ministry work at the high price of $50 a week. And I was at this party because I always looked for the parties because the parties were where the free food was because when you're making 50 bucks a week, you're always looking for free food. And so I was at this party and I was actually the one grilling up these hamburgers. And I remember I was in the backyard, I was grilling the hamburgers. I was with my friend Matt Pugh from Arizona and we were just talking and we were a part of this internship program that we both worked for. And we heard that there was a new student coming in town and she was flying in from another program and she was a transfer student. And, you know, me and Matt, we were in the back and we were talking. And we were like, wow, I wonder, you know, I wonder if she's pretty. You know, and I wonder if she's single. I mean, you know, forget about it. if she's pretty. If she ain't single, it don't matter. And, you know, I'm like, I, I wonder if she's friendly. I wonder if she's got a good personality. You know, we're just talking back and forth. And we're like, man, we cannot wait to meet this new girl. And somebody went to the airport to pick her up. And they were bringing her to the house that we were at. And I remember we were in the back. We were talking. And all of a sudden, I saw the front door open up. And there she was. She come walking in. And I thought, well, you know, since I'm a stud, I let her work the room first and then when she comes outside and sees me, it's game over. 
So I watched her through the window as they just kind of walked her around from person to person, introducing her, shaking hands, laughing, all of that stuff. And I'm like, girl, you don't even know what's waiting for you on the other side of that double door right there. <laughs> and then the moment happened when those French doors begin to open up. And as they begin to open up, my wife began to walk out. And as she was walking out, I'm telling you, there was this light that came from heaven that just began to shine down on her. And as she looked up and our eyes locked, her life was never the same <laughs> since. I wish I was joking, but it's never been the same. And she's like, you're telling me my life has never been the same ever since I met you. But I remember that moment. That's a moment in my life that I will never forget. That's a moment in my life that I met my true love. And I remember after we met each other and she walked back inside, I looked over at my friend Matt and I said, I'm going to marry that girl. And he said, not if I marry her first. <laughs> and so I shut his hand in the grill and I ran inside real quick. No, I was just playing. I didn't do that. But obviously we all know the end of the story. I prevailed and somehow talked her into marrying me and we just celebrated 10 years this past year of marriage. But you see, my life was forever altered because of a moment. I remember another moment in my life that altered my life forever and it was when my firstborn was born, the moment, the first time I ever laid eyes on him. It's a moment in my life that I'll never forget because there was something that changed inside of me. You see, moments that happen in our lives, they usually change our lives. Moments that happen in our lives, usually they alter the course of our lives. And I remember the moment I laid eyes on my son, I felt this love inside of me that I never felt before. And for just a moment, I thought, wow, God, is this how you feel when you see me? And I felt God speak to me in that moment and said, you know, it's a lot like it, but that love doesn't even compare to the love that I have for you. It's moments in life. You see, moments in our lives, they either propel us or they derail us. It's, it's these moments in our lives that mark specific moments in our lives. And I remember the moment that I got a phone call from my happily married parents that after 35 years of marriage and of ministry that they were no longer going to be together and they were getting a divorce. That was a moment in my life that I'll never forget. But I also remember the moment in my life where they wanted to meet with me and my wife three years later and they sat us down and said, you know, God has been doing a work in our lives, restoring our marriage. And we've set a date for September and we want you to do the wedding for us. I remember that moment. It's a moment that will forever mark me. And many of you out there tonight, today, you have moments in your lives that if you would sit and begin to think about, you would say, you know, that moment right there is what pushed me in this direction. That moment right there is what pushed me in that direction. And it's the moments in our lives that guide us and steer us to who we are today. I remember these moments in our lives. I remember the moments. I remember the moment I said I do. Maybe you're sitting out there and you remember the moment that you got the phone call, the doctor saying, it's not good, I need you to come in. Maybe you remember the moments of someone calling you in and saying, I just, I don't love you anymore. And in those moments, what do we do? In those moments, we feel so alone. In those moments, we feel so abandoned, yet we find ourselves in a moment and again, that moment, we can either allow it to destroy us or we can allow it to propel us. We have good moments in our lives and we have bad moments in our lives. But nonetheless, the moments define who we are. You see, that's why I like this story right here, because this story is just one moment in Jesus's life while he's on earth. And if you begin to read the story of Zacchaeus and Jesus walking through Jericho, you'll find that, number one, when scholars begin to debate this and research this, 
They think that because of where Jesus was going, that he actually went way out of his way just to go through Jericho on that day. Which lets me know this, that Jesus is willing to go and to interrupt anything that he's got going on just to reach me. And I want you to know that too. That Jesus is willing to disrupt anything, go out of his way just to meet you where you are. And so the Bible begins to say in verse 1 of chapter 19, it says that Jesus was passing through Jericho. And that as he's passing through Jericho, that there's this guy there, his name is Zacchaeus. And we all know the story of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord. No church people in the house. Wow. I'm all by myself here. My wife wasn't even singing with me. She was in first service. Sunday school, y'all. You should try it sometime. But the Bible says that there's this man named Zacchaeus, and Zacchaeus is excited to see Jesus. And the Bible says that Zacchaeus has heard about this man named Jesus. He's heard about what he has done. He's heard about, probably from his friends, how Jesus has touched their lives. And so Zacchaeus is intrigued by the fact that Jesus is coming through his town. Now, something you need to know about Zacchaeus is Zacchaeus was a tax collector. And back in those days, tax collectors were the most hated people on the planet because they stole from everybody. He was a mean guy. He was ruthless. He was, he was heartless. He would steal suckers from babies and money from old ladies. He was just a mean guy. So he was already hated, yet he was so excited to see Jesus. And the Bible says that Jesus was coming through town and that Zacchaeus went out to see Jesus. But because of the crowd, that Zacchaeus couldn't see him. So he wanted to climb up into a tree. You see, this is what I love about that is that Zacchaeus was not willing to let anything, any physical, anything mental keep him from seeing Jesus. That he had heard about this man and there was something about him that every time he heard, he knew that there was something in his life that was missing and he felt like maybe this man has it. So he wasn't willing to let any physical thing hold him back. So he's like, you know what? I'm short. I can't see. I'm going to climb up in a tree. So he climbed up in a tree and the story goes like this. As Jesus is passing through Jericho, the Bible says that Jesus comes to the spot where Zacchaeus is. And he stops and he looks up in the tree and he says, Zacchaeus, come down because I've got to go to your house today. You see, it's interesting to me that the Bible would say Jesus came to the spot. In other words, it's saying this, Jesus knows exactly where you are. Do you think Jesus was rolling up into town, looking up in trees, thinking, wow, I wonder who's going to be hanging out in a tree today? But yet Jesus had to go through Jericho for a reason. And that reason was Zacchaeus. And the Bible says that he went to the spot that Jesus knows exactly where you're at. You see, you may be out there right now and you feel all alone. You may be out there right now and you're going through a moment in your life right now that is one of the toughest things that you've ever had to face. And you feel like God's forsaken you. You haven't heard him. You pray, but you don't hear anything. And you think, has God abandoned me? Has God forgotten about me? And God's saying, no, 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 no. I know exactly where you are. And don't you worry. You don't have to come to me. I'm coming to you. That I'm going to interrupt whatever I have to do to get to the spot where you're at. So the Bible says that he gets to the spot. You see, Zacchaeus went searching for something, but the very thing that he was searching for came searching for him. And that today you may be in here and you may be searching for something. You may be searching for hope. You may be searching for peace. You may be searching for a savior. But I'm here to tell you today, you may come searching for something. But the very one that you're looking for has been searching for you. And that today you're going to find him. I promise you that. And the Bible says that he comes to the spot. And then he tells Zacchaeus this. He said, Zacchaeus, come down from the tree quick. He said, I've got to go spend time at your house. You see, that's interesting to me because the very verse, first verse 
of this chapter, it says Jesus is passing through Jericho. But once he gets to the spot of someone that he needs to see, now he's willing to stay. He's saying, come down, I got to go hang out at you at your house. I've got to alter my plans. I'm no longer just passing through. You're the reason why I came by here. And he says, come down, we got to go to your house today. And scriptures say that as they are walking to their house and to his house, that people begin to mutter. It says, all the people begin to mutter. Does Jesus not know he's going to the house of a sinner? You see, it says all the people, which I imagine if it says all the people, that means the disciples too. Because how many of you know that the disciples always had a hard time of seeing what Jesus saw? And that when I read that scripture right there, it lets me know this, that Jesus doesn't see the labels that other people put on us. He only sees the person. That maybe there are things that are being spoken into your life, said over your life, or this is all you'll ever be, all you'll ever become. Jesus is saying, I don't see that. I only see what I created. Maybe some of you in here today, you've come in with, with some sin in your life. Maybe some of you, you come in and you raise your hands every service. You worship, you even tithe. You've gone through growth track, yet there are secret sins that you are hiding that you think no one else knows about. Jesus is saying, I know about it, but when I look at you, I don't see that. I only see what I created. You see, the other day on Friday, I have a four-year-old son, which most of you know, and I have a almost two-year-old little girl, and they are the love of our lives most of the time. And in other times, they're like, Jesus, give me patience. Jesus, take the will. Jesus, you want to come watch my kids for a minute? And Friday morning was that morning. When I got up, I don't know what it was about Ryder, but Ryder was lit from the moment he woke up. And he was just so challenging that day. And there, he wasn't listening to anybody. He didn't want to eat breakfast. He didn't want to put his clothes on. He just stood, literally stood in the middle of the living room and just cried and yelled. And I looked at my wife and I said, you know, I'm getting ready to take him to school. And I think today is one of those extended day type of school days for him. And I said, I'm going to sign him up for extended day and let him stay for two extra hours. <laughs> so we were late getting in the car. We ran into traffic. I was flustered. We finally get to school. The little girl has taken her shoes off. And so I'm trying to get her shoes on. I'm trying to get Ryder into class before um, uh, he's marked as absent. Because if he's marked that absent, then you got to walk the walk of shame all the way down this long hallway to get a pass. And so when I came in, I was like 10 minutes late. And when I came in, the teacher must have saw my face and saw the stress on my face because she looked at me and she said, you know what, EJ? She goes, just why don't you just leave him with me and you go, why don't you go get a cup of coffee or something? And and I was like, thank you so much. And so I marked the paper and I took off. I dropped Kinsley off and usually I pick him up around 2.30 at deck. And I remember this day, I'm like, you know what, he's going to stay at school till 4.30. And um, so... I was at the house, I was trying to take a nap, I just laid down, and the phone rings. It's 3.30, my phone rings. When my phone rings, I answer it, and it's one of the ladies at his school, and she said, Mr. Morales, we just wanted to know if you were gonna come pick up your son today. (laughs) Or is he going to extended day? And I said, lady, he's supposed to be in extended day. And she said, well, he's been sitting at deck for an hour waiting for you to come pick him up. And when she said that to me, I immediate, my immediate response was, did you guys not look at the paper? He's supposed to be in extended day. And she said, well, Mr. Morales, I apologize. I don't know what happened. He had two subs today. They took him to deck and he's been sitting there for an hour waiting on you. I know that my son, after 15 minutes of sitting at deck without me coming to pick him up, he begins to cry because he feels like I've forgotten about him. And I immediately forgot about everything that he did. I immediately forgot about the attitude that he had. I immediately forgot about wanting to leave him at school to get two hours of a break. And this righteous indignation began to come up in me and I begin to say, that's my son right there. And if he's ever mistreated in any way, I'm gonna take care of it. 
And I went to school, we figured it out, come to find out it was my fault that he was at deck the entire time. So then I had to apologize to everybody. But here's my point with this, that I didn't see his mood, his attitude, his disobedience. I only saw my son. I only saw my inheritance. I only saw my blood, the royalty, the authority that he has with me. And you see, that's the same way with your heavenly father. When he looks at you, he doesn't see your sins. He doesn't see your mistakes. He doesn't see the issues that you have. He only sees his authority. He only sees his son, his daughter. He sees his blood. And that today, no matter what you're walking through or what you've walked through, you have an authority with God. You have an authority with your creator that maybe God didn't create you to do what you're doing right now, but he definitely created you for something more. And that there's nothing that you've ever done in your past that will ever disqualify you for what God has for you in your future. That he doesn't see the labels. He only sees the person. And so they begin to mutter. Does he not know that he's going to be with a sinner? He's hanging out with sinners. And the Bible doesn't say what transpired. The Bible doesn't say what happened. The Bible doesn't say how long Jesus was at his house. All the Bible says is it goes from one scripture where they're calling him a sinner to the very next scripture, Zacchaeus standing up at his table and saying, Jesus, I'm going to give half of everything I have to the poor. And if I've cheated anybody, I'm going to give back four times the amount that I took. You see, in that moment, Zacchaeus was making this declaration to Jesus. I'm going to bankrupt myself for other people. That I'm tired of the life that I'm living. That everything that I've stolen, I'm giving back. Everything that I've earned the right way, I'm going to give it away. Half of it. Why? Because you've changed my life. You see, one moment with Jesus will change everything. One moment with Jesus will change the course of your life forever. That here Jesus was able to take the most hated man in the world. And the Bible doesn't say that Jesus preached this four-point sermon. All it said was he had a moment with Zacchaeus. And in that moment, Zacchaeus' life was changed forever. As you stand to your feet today. Usually I have this story, something cool that happened where I ran into somebody or had an opportunity to hear somebody's story of God's redeeming power in their life and God's saving grace and how they were destined for prison or destined for something. And, but yet God came and turned the lives around. And usually I, I, I love ending my messages with those kinds of stories because I believe that if God can do it for them, God can do it for you, that the same God that they serve is the same God that you serve, that the same God that freed them from the change that they were bound from is the same God that can free you. But today I don't have one of those stories because the story hasn't yet been written. Because for some of you out here today, that's gonna be your story in just a few moments. That for some of you, you came searching for something you're getting ready to find out that the one who you've been searching for is searching for you. That to find God is to actually have God find you. And today, God, God is here. He wants to meet you. He wants to change your life. And if you'll allow him just one moment, I promise you, your life will be altered forever. I promise you, your life will be set free from the lifelong imprisonment that you've had of your past, your past mistakes, your sins, God is here for you. You see, God knows where you're at. He's willing to do whatever it takes to meet you where you are. And today, maybe that's you. Today, maybe you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. I want to give you an opportunity. I don't want this moment to pass 
without you having an opportunity to accept Christ in your life. So today, if you would, with every head bowed, every eyes closed, I'm going to ask you this simple question. That if you do not know Jesus as your personal Savior, you've never accepted him into your life, or maybe you're out there today and you need to rededicate your life. That at one point you knew him, but you've allowed things to come up and to separate you from God. If that's you today, I wanna to give you an opportunity to accept him into your life today. And if that is you, I just want you to simply throw up your hand. We're not gonna embarrass you. We're not gonna call you out. We just want to know who we're praying for. I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. If that's you today. Don't let this moment pass. Don't let this moment pass. Maybe you have no idea why you're here today. I'll tell you why. Because Jesus is willing to do whatever it takes to meet you. And if that's you today, he's here he loves you. He knows who you are. He cares about you. He wants to set you free from the things that have been binding you, holding you back. If that's you, just slip up your hand. I see hands all over this building. And man, now this is what we're going to do, City Life. Just grab the hand of the person next to you. We're going to pray this prayer together. And I want you to grab the hand of the person next to you because for some of you, you're going to be holding the hand of the person who just raised their hand. And I want them to know that there's a church that's backing them, that there's a church that loves them, that they're not making this decision on their own, that there's a church that doesn't judge, but there's a church that loves. And so today, together, we're going to pray this prayer. And everybody repeat this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, I realize today that I am a sinner in need of a savior. And I pray today that you would come into my heart, forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me, even when I didn't deserve it. Jesus, thank you for seeing who you created and not the labels that are on my life. So Jesus, thank you for giving me a second chance, for giving me of my sins and setting me on the path that you created for me to be on. Jesus, we love you. In your name, amen. Thank you again for joining us for today's broadcast. Our prayer is that it ministered to you and it changed your life. If there's anything we can pray with you about or God has used this ministry to touch you in any way, please send us an email at info at citylifechurch.cc. We want to invite you to be our guest at one of our Sunday morning worship experiences. You can find our times and locations on our website at citylifechurch.cc and you can also download our City Life Church app on your smartphones and tablets for more online messages. It was great having you with us today and we'll see you next time.